The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... to visit isn't the world you know. It's an alien planet, so distant, so remote, so anonymous, that it bears a number instead of a name. It's a world called A-15. And while it may be light years away in distance and many years away in time, we're going to take you there right now. You'll travel with four others, young but seasoned veterans of space flight, the kind of tough, resilient young men the rigors of space will demand. Ready for anything? Well, almost anything. Eskia! Eskia! What are you shooting at? Lord Capitan! It is a frog! A giant frog! You're out of your mind, Eskia! There isn't any animal life on this planet! Look! Behind the hill! What do you call that thing? It's impossible! Captain, this whole planet is impossible! The Eleventh Plague was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Henry Slesser and stars Russell Horton. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Denture wearers agree. Snug cushions hold loose dentures so comfortably tight, I feel confident again. Soft adhesive snug brand denture cushions ease sore gums from loose-fitting plates. No messy fixing like powders or pastes. Snug is easy to shape and fit. Won't wash off. Get temporary relief from loose-fitting dentures until you see a dentist with Snug. Now in the new four-cushion economy package. Snug, another fine product from Mentholatum. Saturday on CBS Television. Don't miss the 38th Annual Golden Globe Awards during a live broadcast from the Beverly Hilton Hotel in Beverly Hills, California. Leading the nominations are Alice, Dallas, Barbara Bell Getty, Ed Asner, Lonnie Anderson, Alan Alda, and Valerie Bertinelli. Who will win? Find out during the 38th Annual Golden Globe Awards. Saturday at 9, 8 Central and 9 on CBS Television. Winston Churchill, Albert Einstein, Nelson Rockefeller, Bruce Jenner, Thomas Edison, Leonardo da Vinci. These people and many other brilliant, talented, creative people overcame a form of learning disability. This is Pat Collins for the Foundation for Children with Learning Disabilities. There are over 10 million children in this country who are learning disabled, and they can be helped to overcome their learning differences. We owe it to them and to ourselves. Some of these children can be our country's future doctors, lawyers, artists, scientists, and politicians. You can help children with learning disabilities. Please send a contribution to SCLD, 99 Park Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. That's FCLD, 99 Park Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. This is the Northwest Headquarters of the USSC. No, those initials aren't familiar to you yet, but... They're famed the world over in the year of our story, 2065 A.D. They stand for United States Space Command, and it's the military arm of the nation's space program, a program which has expanded to the stars thanks to the astonishing rate of development in space flight. But while the technology has changed dramatically, some things remain very much the same, especially human emotions. Captain Joel Taylor reporting, sir. Oh, yes, Captain. Come on in. I, uh... I understand you've seen your orders. Well, no, sir, not really. All I've been told was that the mission starts in nine weeks and that I'm supposed to pick a crew of three. That's right. And since it's a three-year mission, you better pick them carefully, Captain. 
You choose three faces you won't get tired of looking at. Choose three temperaments you can put up with during those long months. That's the best advice I can give you. Yes, sir. You, uh... You ever had a mission this long, Captain? Oh, no, sir. My longest tour was six months. I remember my first long tour. We had an outpost on Callisto then. And I chose the crew myself. I picked the highest rated man I could. A real crack crew, Captain Taylor. But I... I didn't pay any attention to temperament. And by the end of the first year, one of my men had killed another. And then the rest hated each other so much that the mission had to be aborted. So, uh, don't you worry about service records so much, Captain. Pick guys you can live with. I, uh, still don't know what the mission is, Colonel Deegan. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, you and your men are to set up a permanent or semi-permanent station on planet A-15 in the Antares system. You'll construct a radio station to provide free contact with Earth and ships in the vicinity. You'll provide an emergency landing area for ships in distress, but not a way station. To do all this, you'll have to spend many months in astronomical observation in order to keep track of all conditions involving space traffic. And uh, you'll do anything else we want you to do. Yes, sir. There'll be a four-week briefing session for you and your men as soon as you've determined who they are. Start collecting those service records. Choose your men and report back to me. Oh, uh... And one other thing. Remind me to tell you about the magician. So these are your choices, Captain Taylor. Yes, sir. Let me see now. Lieutenant Carlos Esquia, co-pilot, born Santa Rosa, Argentina, age 26, four years interstellar experience, class rank four, psych rating excellent. Hmm? Esquia. Uh, speak English? Oh, yes, sir. Also uh, French, Spanish, Italian, and Russian. <laughs> Sounds like salad dressing. <laughs> uh, Lieutenant Gary Flack, navigator, born Birmingham, Alabama, age 26, three years interstellar, class rank 7, sight rating. Excellent. <laughs> and the third man, Sergeant William Bart, General Truman, born New York City, age 27. Interstellar 5, psych rating. Good. Uh, that's it, sir. Um, do you think you might tell me about it now? You, you mentioned uh, a magician? Oh, yes, yes, that's right, Captain. Well, it's not a difficult problem, just a bit unusual. In what way? Well, when you arrive on A-15, you'll have to dispossess someone. Dios, Captain. You mean there's somebody living on that hunk of rock? That's right, Eskia. Around the year 2041, there were a lot of wildcat merchant ships beachcombing the entire system after false rumors of gold were spread. Well, the United Space Federation stopped it finally. However, one of those vessels left a prospector on A-15. You mean Maroon there, Captain? Well, they don't really know, Sergeant, but he's been there ever since. Surviving God knows how. His name is Corsini, and uh, Colonel Deegan says he's probably a little mad. Well, after 14 years, what else could he be? <laughs> what are we supposed to do with him, Captain? We'll take him into custody. Put him on the first supply ship that arrives after our base is established. Well, how long will that be? About two months. Sir, what was that you said about him being a magician? Well, that's the only uh, background information we have, Sergeant. That prior to becoming a space prospector, he was a stage magician. <laughs> right now, the supposition is that he fancies himself as king of the planet. <laughs> he may not want to abdicate, Captain. Yeah, we'll humor him. Tell him the Earth government wants to give him an official welcome as ruler of another sovereign state. <laughs> all right. Now, briefing begins at 1,400 hours today. From now on, all sessions will be at 0800 every morning, excluding Sundays, until blast-off. Dear Helena, we 
still have another six weeks in Star Drive before making landfall on A-15. But I'm already beginning to wonder if we're a compatible crew. We had a blast-off party in the old tradition, but it never got off the ground. No, uh, pun intended. Jerry Flack told some southern jokes. A skier boasted about women. Willie Bart got drunk. Still wasn't much of a party. I guess we were all thinking of the three long years ahead. Dear Helena, I'm happy to report that we made an uneventful landing on A-15. The only word I can think of to describe this place is eerie. It's small, hardly bigger than an asteroid, and just as rocky. But there are queer little patches of green vegetation. The worst thing about it is the wind. It's warm, and it never stops. Dear Helena, it's taken us almost six weeks to build the base that is both our control headquarters and our home. The truth is, I was sorry to see the work finished, because the crew could only start getting restless. That's why I decided it was time to complete another part of our mission. Ben, starting tomorrow, we're going to hunt up our friend Corsini the Great. Well, you sure there is such a guy, Captain? We haven't seen one sign of him since we've been here. Maybe he made himself invisible, huh? <laughs> or maybe he died a long time ago and nobody knows it, huh? Well, that might be true, Lieutenant. But just the same, we'll make up a searching party that'll fly the copter in a circle covering a radius of 100 miles. If we don't spot him the first time, we'll make temporary camp at the perimeter of that circle and cover another 100 miles the next day. We'll keep doing that until we have our man. Or his body, huh? Either one. Who goes, Captain? Well, two men will be needed here, Sergeant. One at the ship and one at the transmitter. So, I go and, uh, Lieutenant Flack goes with me. Well, that suits me, Captain. We'll go full battle dress, Lieutenant. This Corsini may be harmless, but, uh, we won't take any chances. is Captain Joel Taylor, USSC. Get, get away from me. Leave me alone. It's all right. It's all right, Mr. Corsini. We haven't come to hurt you. We're delegates from Earth. We, we uh, came to invite you to uh, pay us a visit. You don't belong here. I didn't give you permission to land. You are here illegally. We mean you no harm. The Earth government has sent us here to ask you to Washington as our official guest. You see, our starship is only 80 miles from here. And you can stay at the camp until the next ship arrives from Earth. Uh, no. No, I won't go. I refuse. Well, it's for your own good, Mr. Corsini. This is my planet. Mine. Invaders. That's what you are. Captain, look out. Uh, uh, spin him around, Captain. Uh, Lieutenant, wait. D don't hit him. No. No, for Pete's sake, you may have killed him. Well, he was trying to kill you, wasn't he? Uh, it's okay, he's still breathing. Uh, help me get him back to the helicopter. I was hoping we could bring back a guest. Looks like we've got a prisoner. Mr. Corsini, um, can I talk to you? 
What? What do you want? Now, look, I, um... I know how you feel about this so-called invasion of your home, but believe me, our intentions are peaceful. Your intention is to rob me of my planet. Mr. Corsini, nobody owns a planet. The Space Federation made that clear 15 years ago. This is my world, Captain. My kingdom. Well, it's a poor kingdom, isn't it? No food, no company. You didn't come here willingly. No. They put me here. Those people on the ship, you see, I was a stowaway. I thought I might make my fortune in space. Oh, they laughed at me, called me crazy. But then, when they couldn't find the gold they sought, they called me a Jonah and left me here. They didn't know that it would become my kingdom. I see. You'd better let me free, Captain. It would be better for all of you. I'm sorry, Mr. Corsini. I've learned to do things here. Things so horrible you couldn't conceive of them. I'll bring plagues on you, like Moses did to the pharaohs of Egypt. I'll bring terrible plagues down on you. Yes, like Moses. I'll torment you until you beg me to stop. Look, look, we'll, we'll talk soon again, Mr. Corsini. Oh, you'll be sorry. You'll be sorry when I came to my world, Captain. I warn you. The plagues. <laughs> tried to talk to a mosquito, but it's no use. He's irrational. You know what I think? He won't eat our food, but he does not refuse our whiskey. Give him a slug with a few bye-bye drops. Hmm. Maybe we'll do that. Captain, mm. Captain, wake up. Uh, uh, what is it, mosquito? He's the magician, Corsini. Oh, oh, what about him? He is gone. What? I went in to bring him the whiskey with the sleeping stuff, and he was gone. I don't see how he could have done it. He was chained, a ski. There's no way he could but get he out of it. he did. He's a magician, all right. And an, an escape artist. Then right. we have to do it all over again. Okay, we'll track Corsini tomorrow and hold him this time. Ah! What was that? It sounded like Bart. Come on. Sergeant. Sergeant, what's the matter? Good Lord, Captain, the, the, the water. The water. Well, what about it? I woke up thirsty. I went to the water tank. I poured this. Mother, did you? Look at that, Captain. Well, it looks red. Red and thick. I tasted it, Captain. I drank some before I saw what it looked like. It's blood, Captain. The water has all been turned to blood. Thus saith the Lord, In this thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in mine hand upon the waters which are in the river, and they shall be turned to blood, and thou shalt loathe to drink of the water. Has the magician of planet A-15 proved that he really is the lord of his world? And as we all know, the plagues numbered more than one. We'll see what other numbers Corsini the Great has planned for our adventurers in space when we return with Act Two. Once you've tried it, you'll agree. The Red Devil Pad Pater Kit from True Value Hardware Stores is a stroke of genius. Hi, Pat Summerall to tell you the painting pad applies paint faster and helps save you work because it eliminates stray bristles and brush marks that might otherwise mar the paint finish. With the Red Devil Deluxe Pad Painter Kit, you get a 9-inch pad painter and a sash trimmer plus a metering pad tray and ladder bracket. Get the Red Devil Deluxe Pad Painter Kit for just six eighty eight from participating True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers. The boy next door is a doctor and he's single. My daughter, what a girl. She's single too. I'll invite him for some donuts and my coffee. Maxwell House, I'm leaving it up to you. Get together with the great taste of Maxwell House coffee. Coffee you can count on. Hi, this is Andy Williams. 
I learned about the importance of donating blood when my mother became ill. Although most people could qualify as donors, many have not donated blood because they have not personally experienced the need, either for themselves or for those they care about. Presently, over 30,000 pints of blood are required in the United States every day, and the need is increasing. The balance between supply, demand, and human life depends on you, the public. Donors often respond when there is an emergency or a disaster, but blood of every group and type must be available at all times. Blood banks depend on people who are willing to give to meet the day-to-day -day blood needs. Donate today at a blood bank in your community. Blood is life. Let's keep it running. A public service of this station and the American Association of Blood Banks. Even in the warm winds of the planet A-15... The four-man crew on the lonely outpost feel the cold chill of terror. Corsini the Great, the marooned magician, had seemed like comic relief when they contemplated their assignment of capture and containment. But now, with his chains dangling free, the magician gone, and their precious drinking water turned to blood, the dread they feel is almost supernatural. Let's stop all this speculating. Now, I think it's obvious what happened here. Corsini slipped out of his bond somehow and contaminated the tank. Wow, Captain. Where did he get whole blood on this nothing planet? The thing we have to do is find a new source of water. Well, we better. Our supply ship won't be here for another two weeks. There ain't any water holes on this planet. No lakes, no rivers. We'll just have to dig for it, Sergeant, that's all. You mean underground wells? Well, it rains on A-15, doesn't it? There's vegetation, that means there's water somewhere, and we'll find it. Either that or die. So, we will dig and pray for rain. Dear Helena, it's raining today. Raining hard. And I can't tell you how happy we were to feel those first few drops. Every container you can imagine is out there gathering up the precious water that's coming our way. Especially since ten hours of continuous digging produced nothing resembling an underground source of water. We might have all been dead in a few days if the rain hadn't come like a gift from heaven. And tomorrow, rain or shine, we go out again in search of the man who was responsible for our predicament. The, uh, magician of A-15. But I can tell you this much. None of us are amused by that crazy old man anymore. There he is, Captain. Right out in the open. Yeah. Not running this time. You know what I think? I think he's not afraid of us anymore. Where did he go, Captain? Uh, behind that hill, I'd say. I don't like it. I don't like the fact that he is not afraid. And you know something else? What? I am. Oh, he's just a crazed old man, a skier. I'll tell you what. Uh, you stay here and cover me. I'll go to the rise and see if I can spot him. Sure, dear Captain. Corsini! Where are you? Captain! Captain! Ah. Eskia! What are you shooting at? Oh, Captain! It's a frog! A giant frog! You're out of your mind, Eskia! There isn't any animal life on this planet! Oh, look! Behind the hill! What do you call that thing? It's impossible. Captain, this whole planet is impossible. So you didn't catch up with Corsini, huh? 
We caught up with him, all right. Only he changed himself into a frog. What are you talking about, a skier? He was a frog, Sergeant. A monster, maybe 15 feet tall. So there goes Colonel Deacon's theory about the planet not supporting life. Now, we don't know if the thing was indigenous. Maybe it was brought here. By who, Captain? Corsini the Great? This is crazy. I mean, first the water turns to blood, and now you see the... Hey, you hear something? Well, sounds like an aircraft or something. Whee! Look at the stars. Over there, they're usually bright as diamonds. Something's coming from, from over there. Maybe it's some planet phenomenon. The sky's getting dark. That's what's happening. Listen to that sound. It, it sounds like insects. Hey, that's what it is. Insects, flies, gnats, billions of them. Do you look out they're coming for us? No! Take cover. Back to the shelter. We'll be alive. Hurry! Hurry! Right. Let's hear it. How bad is it, Lieutenant? Well, pretty bad, Captain. Those damn flies didn't get many bites out of us, but they did manage to get into the food supply. But everything was sealed up tight. They ate right through the containers. Good Lord. Is it all gone? All of it? Whatever's left is inedible, Skier. It's full of maggots. First, no water. Now, no food. What do we do, Captain? We do have water, Ski, you remember? Yeah, but I doubt if it's going to rain food, Captain. We'll eat grass if we have to. The stuff is edible, remember? Corsini thrived on it. Yeah, well, this is Corsini's doing, Captain. It has to be. He's trying to drive us off. He can't control nature, Lieutenant. Well, I'm not so sure. Maybe he's a better magician than you think. Captain! Captain! No, what? What's the matter, Willie? I... I just made an engine inspection, Captain. Something's gotten into them. Clogged the exhaust tubes. Flies, maybe? Well, some kind of barnacles. Tough as steel, Captain. I, I couldn't scrape them off. I couldn't even pry them off. It'll take a month to clean them out. Well, then... Maybe we better start cleaning right now. What is the matter with you, Taylor? You think you can solve every problem just by giving an order? It's my job to give orders, a skier, and my title is captain. Wait, let me tell you the facts of life, captain. It's about time we... Oh! oh. What, what is it? Oh, my leg. I, I just touched it here. Sir, pain. Lieutenant, you're a medic. Take a look. Oh, ow! I, I can't sit down, but... The, the pain of... What's going on now? Let's see that leg again. Oh, look. The boils. I am covered with boils. Yeah, the same with me. Look at them all over me. Uh, Captain, look at your arm. It it must be some, some kind of infection. Well, maybe those flies... Oh, they're on my feet. I can't... I can't stand up. What's going on? Captain, let's get off this rotten planet. Don't you see what's happening? The plagues. The plagues of Egypt. Now, Skia, let's not get carried away. Think about it. Blood, frogs, flies, gnats. What next? What What did they call the next one? Wait, wait, I remember. A mural of cattle, whatever that means. And we don't have any cattle, Lieutenant. Yeah, but we have a ship, Captain. That's as precious as cattle were in biblical days. And a, and a murin might be the same as barnacles. And boils. A plague of boils. Are you telling me that is a coincidence? No, I'm not saying that. The, 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 the truth is, Corsini the magician, he... He said something about bringing down the plagues of Egypt... And that's what he's doing. Captain, we can't beat somebody with powers like that. I'm not ready to admit he has any powers. Wait, hey, where are you going, Captain? I'm taking the copter out. Alone? Yes, alone. I'm going to find Corsini. I don't know if he does have anything to do with what's happening, but I intend to find out. Corsini? Corsini, come up and talk! 
Come to me, Captain. My subjects come to me. All right. I'm coming. Kneel, subject. Look, Corsini. Kneel, I said. All right. I'll kneel. Satisfied? Now you may speak, subject. I want to know something. These things that have been happening to us. How do you do it? That... I know you're not supposed to ask a magician that question. It is God's magic, not mine. But it's... It's your magic wand, isn't it? I have been given powers, yes. And you have not seen their full scope. Corsini, I came to tell you these tricks have got to stop at once. Or we'll consider you an enemy. We will ignore the order we have to bring you home safely. We'll kill you, Corsini. Go back, Captain. What happened to you? What went on here? Flack, Willie, what what is it? Boulders, Captain. Gigantic boulders. What? Stones, Captain. Great big stones from the sky. The Lord knows where they came from. They dropped right out of nowhere. Marks us all down. Well, then where are they? If, If there were stones, where are they now? Well, they're gone. All of them. Hailstones, Captain. That's what they were. That must be the seventh plague. Now, look. There weren't any stones, and there aren't any plagues. We're being fooled. We're being tricked. Lieutenant, well, what's the eighth plague? What, what's going to happen to us next? I can tell you that. If Corsini sticks to the script, it'll be locusts. Oh, no. There will probably be another swarm like the flies and the gnats. I can't take too much more of this, Captain. But we'll be prepared this time. We'll make sure we get inside the ship at the first sign of things. We'll use the the heat guns to blast them. And if they get too troublesome, we'll blast off and burn them with our rocket fire. Now, is that understood? We are not going to have to wait long, Captain. They are coming now. We won't have time to get to the ship. Get those heat guns ready. Look! Look! There are millions of them, Captain. Pick up your weapons. Start firing. Come in. You... They are not just locusts. What are they? They're some kind of insect. Look at the size of them. They got faces. All of them. Faces. Mama. They look... They look like my mother. My poor dead mom, Dorothy. They look like my Dorothy. It's just a trick. Another rotten trick. Fire! Fire those guns! I can't, Captain. It, it's... It's Louise. Oh, no. It's... It's Heller's base. Captain. Captain, where are you? Back. Is that you? I... I can't see. I'm... I'm blind. Some, somebody help me. Look. Everybody stay where you are. Don't move. They're blind at us, Captain. The locusts. No, we are not blind. There just isn't any light. No light. It's another plague, another trick of Corsini. Darkness. The plague of darkness. Oh, well, how, how do you know? How can you be sure? Just stay calm. It'll pass, Lieutenant, like all the rest. Oh, when, Captain? I don't know. Captain! Corsini! Where are you? I'm here, Captain. I can see you, but you can't see me. Turn the lights on, Corsini. I know you can do it. Yes, Captain, you're right. I can do it. I can give you back the light. But I will not. Unless you and your men make me a solemn promise. We can't make deals, Corsini. We're acting on orders. Very well. If you wish the plague of darkness to remain with you forever. Listen to him, Captain. Give us back our eyes, Corsini. We will do what you ask. Tell him, Captain. Please, Captain. What are your demands, Corsini? That you leave, Captain. 
that you get back into your ship and leave my planet at once. It, it can't be that immediate. That, that there are preparations. That the ship has to be thoroughly checked, refueled. Do what must be done. But be off my planet by the next three suns. Is that understood? Uh, all right, Corsini. I agree. Your solemn word. My word, Corsini. Now, give us back the light. It's yours, Captain. You leave by the next three hours. We're not leaving. We'll radio headquarters and tell them the situation, but we won't leave unless they order it. Well, I got the word. We're to hold our ground, Lieutenant, and do what we can to end the menace that Corsini represents. Well, Captain, what about the next plague? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there, there will be a next plague, won't there? That will be the death of the firstborn. Firstborn? What does that mean? None of us have any kids. No, oh, no, we don't have children. I mean, I mean the death of the firstborn among ourselves. And since I'm the oldest, I guess that means me. Well, if the great Corsini runs true to form, the men on planet A-15 will soon be without a captain. But can the angel of death, which passed over the homes of the Israelites to smite the firstborn children of the Egyptians, find its way into outer space? We'll find out when we return to Act Three. Today we're on a college campus for another Bell System quiz. What are you studying here at school? I'm studying music. I'm studying to be an opera singer. You don't look like an opera singer. Usually there. You know, I don't look like an opera singer. Listen, I have a little quiz for you today. You ready for a quiz? Go ahead. Now, do you make long-distance calls on the weekend? Yes. If you were to dial direct, without operator assistance, any place out of state except Alaska and Hawaii, talk for 20 minutes. How high a bill could you run up? Probably about $20. What's your first name? Lydia. Ah, oh, Lydia, you flunked the test. It's $3.33 or less, including tax. Pretty cheap. That's anytime Saturday and Sunday till 5. This weekend, I could probably call several opera houses all over the country, ask them for a job. <laughs> you could sing an aria over the phone. I mean, a 20-minute aria. <laughs> At three dollars and thirty-three cents, I could call. Uh, You'd say hi. It's me, Lydia. Hi, it's, it's me, Lydia. Uh, how'd you like to hear uh, "Si Mi Chiamo No Mi Mi" from La Boheme? Reach out, reach out, touch someone. Hello, this is Ann Miller. As I am speaking, intensive research is going on from coast to coast. Research sponsored by the March of Dimes and its fight against birth defects. A doctor in San Diego asked why women who smoke during pregnancy have more low birth weight babies. Also, a young woman researcher in North Carolina probes the genetic factors and disorders involving cholesterol. A Colorado scientist seeks the prevention of fetal growth retardation by studying how hormones act in the uterus. And this is only a small part of the scientific research being done by March of Dimes grantees who received over $9 million last year to probe birth defects, causes, and prevention. It is a long and very difficult road, but it is a road that must be traveled to ensure our next generation's good health. So please get to the March of Dimes to make the road a little smoother, that goal, good health for all, a little nearer. on planet A-15, whistling through the slate gray hills as if whispering a warning to the four men who wait for tragedy to strike again. But the man who is threatened most refused to show his fear. He's Captain Joel Taylor, an officer of the United States Space Command. He is their leader, but he is also young and afraid. Nothing's going to happen. It can't. Now take my word for it. How do you know? Corsini's made good on all the other plagues. Why not this one? Because all the other plagues were imaginary. That's why. The water wasn't blood. It was water. Good drinking water. Are you kidding? I tasted that stuff. You tasted what Corsini wanted you to taste. You saw what Corsini wanted you to see. 
And the frog, was that imaginary? Well, of course it was. Just like all the other hallucinations. The flies, the gnats, the, the barnacles on our ship. You mean we scraped those things off for nothing? And we suffered those boils for nothing because they weren't real. <laughs> they aren't for real. Well, those giant hailstones. You saw them too, but they melted away when you opened your eyes. How come none of us were ever hurt, bruised, even scratched by one of those things, bitten by any of those giant insects? Well, you're right about that, Captain. See, see, and the faces on those giant locusts, we all see different faces. They had to come out of our own minds. Yes, exactly. It's all come out of our own minds, because that's where Corsini the Great operates. You mean... He's a hypnotist. I'm sure of it, Lieutenant. He, he was a stage magician, probably a professional hypnotist in his career on Earth. But something happened to him on this planet. In the 14 years he was marooned, his powers increased in some way, and increased a hundred times. But he can't really hurt us. Is that what you mean? He can't cause us any physical harm. And that's why I'm not worried about the tenth plague. Well, I'm glad you're not, Captain, since you're the firstborn. And I'm also the captain of this expedition. So, let's get some sleep, and let's go look for our hypnotist in the morning. Armed. Captain. Captain Taylor. Hey, 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 what is going on? Well, I'm trying to wake the captain. <laughs> What time is it? It's early, but but I wanted to see if he's okay. Captain, wake up. Uh, 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 what is it? Uh, oh, thank the Lord. You were sleeping so soundly for, for a minute, I thought. <laughs> Lieutenant, you are a nervous wreck. Uh, now, go to sleep. No, no. Uh, maybe we should uh, get an early start. We don't know where Corsini is right now, are we? Might have to make several sorties to find him. Okay, uh, somebody, uh, wake the sergeant. Go ahead, Frank. You are good at waking people. Hey, Willie. Hey, wake up. <laughs> He's a heavy sleeper, all right. Willie, what's the matter with you? Come on. Oh, no. Huh. What's wrong? Oh, Captain, he... He won't wake up. I mean, he's lying there... Lying there with his eyes open. But he doesn't move. Madre de Dios. Get away. Let me let me see him. He looks dead. Yes, he looks dead. And he is dead. And I think he's been dead for more than a few hours. Could it be? Corsini? No, no, that's not possible. Even if it was the plague, that would be all wrong. He wasn't the firstborn. No, stop this. I told you, the plagues are imaginary. Corsini can't harm us. He harmed Willie. He killed him, Captain. But he isn't the oldest. It's wrong. He is the oldest. What? He is. I know it. And Corsini knew it, too. I don't know how. It's, it is magic, Captain. It is really magic. Escalia, you don't know what you're talking about. Willie really must have had a heart attack. And he wasn't the oldest. He was 27. The captain's 28. No, that is not true. Willie, he... He got drunk the night of the blast-off party, and he told me about it. He's been lying about his age for years. He didn't want to wash out of space service. He was 31. 31. And now... He's dead. Eskia... Wait a minute. Say you don't believe it now, Captain. Go ahead. Call it hypnotism. No, Eskia, that's what it wasn't. Well, what do you mean, Captain? Everything else that happened to us was an illusion. But death is real. Willie's death is real. Look. This pinpoint of blood on the back of his head. You think that caused it? Somebody was here last night, Lieutenant. Somebody was here while we all slept. Corsini must have crept into the place and slipped a needle into poor Willie's brain. It's no illusion, Lieutenant. It's cold-blooded murder. That filthy card. It's also something else. 
It's the last trick up his sleeve. Then let's get him right now. We'll get him, all right. Get the ship ready for blast off. What? You heard me. I want to leave A-15 within the hour, just as he expects us to do. I want us to blast off this godforsaken planet as soon as we can. And let him get away with it? Oh, we won't be gone long. Only long enough to make that madman think we're gone. Then we're coming back. Well, what's the strategy, Captain? We'll make a shallow orbit around the planet and then head back for the original campsite. Unless I miss my guess, our magician friend will be in the vicinity celebrating his great victory. And then what? We bring the ship down, Askia. Rockets full blast to break for landing. You understand? Yes, sir, Captain. I understand. Uh, come on in, Captain. Have a seat. Thank you, Colonel David. I don't think I'd have recognized you, Captain Taylor, if you hadn't been announced. It's been three years, Colonel. Yes, three years. And <laughs> I probably look ten years older, don't I? Oh, well, yeah, you had it pretty rough out there. Yeah, it was rough. When I first read your report on what happened, the death of the crewman, the extermination of Cosini, well, maybe he preferred being nothing but a smudge of gray ashes on the planet he loved so much. Yep. That's all that was left of him, a smudge of gray ashes. We spotted him at our campsite, waving his arms at us with insane glee, and then we braked the ship and gave him the full blast of the rockets. He was incinerated in seconds. He didn't suffer, I can promise you that. But you did, Captain, didn't you? Yes. We suffered. Want to tell me about it? I don't know how it really happened. With the magician dead, we returned to our routine chores. We operated our transmitter, took astronomical data, kept the space traffic flowing through the entire system. But then we found that the work wasn't enough. The talk wasn't satisfying. Movies weren't entertaining. <laughs> we got to know each other, all right. And the more we knew, the more we disliked each other. And then the dislike turned to hate. We began to hate each other's faces, voices, habits, even each other's virtues. <laughs> we began to quarrel. We began to fight. And finally... We began to kill. Yes, Keon. Yeah. I don't know what started the argument. I, I don't think Lieutenant Flack meant to fire that heat gun. But he did. I had to lock him up, Colonel. I had to keep him in restraints until the supply ship arrived almost a month later. And I... I had to bury a skier's body in that grace. Oh, All right, easy, Captain. We didn't know how well off we were when Corsini was alive. When he was after us, his plagues drew us together, Colonel. They united us against a common enemy, made us a unit. For months, he gave us something to occupy our minds, something to fight for, to live for. But when the magician died, there was nothing else, only space. Only that half-dead planet and boredom and each other. Yes, Captain. I understand. That was the worst plague of all, Colonel. The eleventh plague. Loneliness. <laughs> the saddest words in the English language. Who can imagine the terrible sense of detachment that our future spacemen will feel when separated, not just from the people and the society they know, but the Earth on which the human race was born. But they'll go anyway, won't they? And it won't be just rockets that will propel man to other worlds. It will be the most human trait of all, curiosity. I'll be back with a final word 
Stay on the air. Excuse me. Yeah? When you get a cold, are you a stay-at-homer or a keep-goinger? I just give my call to contact. Then you're a keep-goinger. I've got a cold right now. Right now? Sure. I- I'd sneeze for you, but I can't. You know, contact. Your nose. Can you make it run? Well, I'd like to, but... We know. Contact's tiny time pills. Look, i got to get back to work. To work, ma'am. got to keep going. No cold tablet or liquid keeps relief going up to 12 hours per dose like contact. That keeps you going cold medicine. Take only as directed. It's just what I need now that I drive a cab. Here, try is Preparation H. You too? Anybody can get hemorrhoids, especially people who sit a lot. But Preparation H often gives me fast, temporary relief from occasional pain and itch. Sounds great. Usual hearing swelling of tissues caused by inflammation. I'll try it. It's good this week. Yeah, 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 it's good this week. Preparation H relieves pain and itch, even helps shrink swelling. Use only as directed. before man and woman begin to colonize the planets. But when they do, can you imagine how many new mysteries will unfold? We hope the Mystery Theater will still be around to relate those stories to new generations of listeners. And who knows, if we find life on the worlds out there in space, we might have a whole new audience with green scales and built-in antennae. Why, they might not even need a radio to hear us. Our cast included Russell Horton, Ian Martin, and Lloyd Batista. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Uh, Mr. Bailey? Who is this? Mr. Bailey, this is Amos Jones. I've taken the liberty of calling you at this hour because I've been witness to an attack by a creature or creatures from outer space. It's an important news story. You're holding that. Just hold it here. Who is this? Amos Jones. I work for you on the Gazette. Uh, what time is it? Uh, it's, it's 4 a.m., sir. I was driving along and I was forced off the road by a UFO. It hit my car. I'm in the firehouse, sir. In the firehouse? Yeah, what are you doing there? Well, they're looking for a pair of pants to fit me. I I lost all my clothes in the fire. I was hit by a UFO, sir. I heard you the first time. You weren't hit hard enough. Now, you'll be in my office in the morning, and you'd better be wearing pants. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.